Birmingham Business School's Global Value Chains Research Cluster is identifying novel approaches to developing high-value engineering capabilities in advanced manufacturing and how it's leading a resurgence in the UK. At the Royal Academy of Engineering in London, business academics and policymakers shared their views on high-value engineering. Typically we talk about high value in terms of manufacturing uh, and manufacturing is really that whole cycle of activities from understanding markets, design, production, distribution, service and increasingly sustainability. Uh, in the middle of that chain is the high value engineering. It might be engineering the product or it might indeed be engineering the production system. But the high value comes from essentially being able to do things that other people can't do. Because if you can do that, then you can charge more money for it. And can Britain do that? Absolutely. It will help industry and the managers to cope with complex challenges and opportunities uh, in managing their global business networks. The workshop heard how the latest data confirms the rise of high-value engineering made in the UK, demonstrating cutting-edge innovation away from structural barriers. But does the UK have the capabilities to sustain this? Yes and no. Um, the work that I'm particularly responsible for within Rolls-Royce is about developing the capability and the design and development capability of our UK supply chain. And do we have the capabilities today Yes, will we have them tomorrow? Not without intervention, not without us helping those companies to actually develop the design and development capabilities we need them to have. The government, had to be fair to them, have done some quite useful things. There's a, a, an initiative kept now called Reshore UK, which is about a one-stop shop for companies looking at bringing activity back. They've done some useful things around capital allowances, for example, and also about R&D tax credits. So that, that's all very good. But we need to go much further in terms of support for finance, things like, a, I'd argue, for an automotive loan fund, for example. Uh, we really need to energise and incentivise the big players to massively overtrain and the apprentices they don't need to release into the supply chain. And we could do a lot more, I think, in terms of trying to get energy costs down for our major manufacturers and actually making the UK an attractive place to invest through be better capital allowances. One other thing which is absolutely crucial, I think, in the wake of the European elections is that we have to stay in Europe. You know, manufacturers and especially auto component suppliers are not going to come to the UK if we are heading towards the exit door from Europe. Birmingham Business School's Global Value Chain Research Cluster and Cambridge University's Institute for Manufacturing also examined the wider context of the current trend of reshoring. Investments are now taking place in developed markets where proximity to market, reliable supply and quality are paramount. So yes, uh, certainly investments coming back uh, into the traditional areas. My reflection, looking more uh, broadly over the last 30, 40 years, was that, that we were too quickly, uh, too quick to suggest that manufacturing uh, was on the wane, and it was, it's more of a, a pendulum where you would expect offshoring investments, followed by onshoring investments, and that pendulum will continue to swing. Certainly we're getting busier and busier and Atkins works right at the forefront of high value engineering so that we can, we can definitely see that there is a trend for uh, high value engineering projects to uh, take off in the UK. Certainly nuclear new build is something that we've been waiting for a long time and that does seem to be starting now and that's drawing on engineers particularly in the nuclear industry but because of the shortage of engineers engineers from other industries as well are being drawn into the nuclear industry. One of the key questions focuses on whether divisions between processes, innovation, design and manufacturing, are blurring and how companies might reflect on this to enhance their performance. I think a lot of the innovation is to do with business model innovations. It's really the ways in which revenue is generated, how the costs are distributed to, uh, along the value chain, and some of the really innovative um, business service providers are thinking about where are their sources of competitive advantage that nobody else has. And not, in some cases, this is really simple things like process mapping and process efficiency, applying the kind of techniques that um, manufacturing uh, adopted at the turn of the 19th and 20th century now. One of the things I think is overlooked is that orchestrating the value chain, sitting on top of the value chain, being the buyer, 
uh, using the resources that are in the global value chain to create new products and new combinations is a skill, uh, is a set of capabilities uh, that is very, very powerful. And um, uh, I think the, the trend, the idea is often to learn capabilities from the bottom up. With this workshop, we have been able to bring together scholars and uh, industry to talk about manufacturing, and in particular the resurgence of manufacturing in the UK. Manufacturing is core to the global value chain research agenda, and we've been uh, very successful in having a fantastic lineup of, of, of speakers who are really triggering interesting debates uh, within, uh, within the workshop.